be showing you guys the Stardew Valley cookbook. Yay! <laughs> if you watched my previous videos, you heard me talk about this a couple times. And how excited I was about it. Because it's been on with me in Stardew Valley. Uh, Stardew Valley and I. <laughs> I played it on the Switch, I think, for the first time. It was either the Switch or the Xbox. And it wasn't right when it came out, I don't think. It was like many years later. I discovered it and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's probably my favorite farming sim game. I have played a little bit of Harvest Moon, and um, I know the guy that made this game um, liked Harvest Moon and got some inspiration from it, so I haven't played the old Harvest Moons. I want to play the old ones. I've only played, like, the DS version, and is there a Wii game? Harvest Moon. If there is, I might have played that, but I might be thinking of something else. But yeah, this book is basically like not only a nice um, recipe book, but art. Artwork is very evident. this recipe is in there. Got the strange bun. Uh, survival burger. And I was right uh, about what I said before about how this is mainly a pescatarian, vegetarian cookbook. There, there's not a single meat recipe in here, but of course you can always add it if you feel like it. It's very simple. If anything, this kind of gives like if you're somebody that, like, I have a hard time coming up with unique, since I'm in the beginning stages of cooking, like, coming up with unique, unique ways to make something, a dish, interesting. And if anything, this gives you a sort of, like, base for something really good, and then you could just add meat to it if you really wanted to. But it's also nice that it's... It's like that, you know, for people who don't want to eat meat or can't eat meat. Oh, and here's the back. It's so pretty. Oh my god. I'll read the back of this. That looks so yummy. The only thing is that it came a little. I, like, heard it when I was, like, turning the pages or something. I heard a crack, and I, I had a feeling that something happened. And sure enough, it did the... Whatever. I guess I don't really care that much. And I'm also pleasantly surprised that it's, like, smaller <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. Like, it's easy to hold. <laughs> like, the Five Nights at Freddy's one. <sighs> Welcome to Stardew Valley. Each season brings a new crop of bountiful food to make for friends and family. From farm staples like veggies, fruit, milk, and eggs, to foraged mushrooms and berries, to fresh fish, there's always something delicious to put on the table. These 50 recipes are based on in-game meals and food, allowing you to cook and eat all your homegrown and fresh-cut ingredients in real life. The official Stardew Valley cookbook is organized by season and has recipes from your favorite characters 
including the Queen of Sauce and Gus at the Star Drop Saloon. Written in collaboration with independent game creator Concerned Ape and packed with original illustrations and food photography. You're gonna like that. The official Stardew Valley cookbook helps you bring the valley's incredible flavors to the dinner table, giving you the energy to take on the world. Oh, and this is honestly great for me too because I have trouble getting veggies into my diet sometimes. Um, I think it's mostly like a texture thing or, I don't know, I don't like raw veggies very much. I like cooked veggies, like roasted or, I don't know, but there's a lot of recipes like that in here. So let's dive in. Let's dive in, guys. This book is beautiful. Yeah, see, I almost wonder if that's when it made the sound, but at least it's still put together. I could always put a little tape over that. <laughs> awesome. I just love how simple farm life this feels. <laughs> See, that makes veggies look really good. When it's in the sunlight like that. Photographed. I have trouble eating tomatoes. I have, I think it's the acidity or something that affects my stomach. literally always had that problem, I think. So I tend to avoid, like, sliced tomatoes and just eat, like, things that are, like, tomato-based, like, sauces and soups, and sometimes, like, a pico de gallo is really good. I, like, I'll deal with it. <laughs> but, like, a whole slice. Maybe it's the seeds or something? I don't know. I have no idea. noticed anyway. Look how freaking amazing that looks. I already know what that is. It's a uh, blackberry cobbler. <laughs> oh. You guys ready for this? <laughs> Spring, summer, fall, and winter. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm sorry. that he did a little messages from the characters. I think that's so sweet. But you see how that burger, doesn't it look like a meat burger? It's not. It's made of eggplant and beans. The patty. That's pretty dope. Oh, look at this. I like how this also looks kind of vintage. Like it captures the um, Stardew Valley aesthetic but it also feels like like a, a fit, like a 90s vintage cookbook. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> like Betty Crocker. It's so funny. Um, I'll read this part up here because this is important words. <laughs> about this book. 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 The recipes in the official Stardew Valley cookbook are based on the in-game recipes and other foods from version 1.5 of Stardew Valley. Though we've tried to remain as true as possible to the original ingredients featured in those recipes, some liberties had to be taken in order to create not only detailed dishes, but also dishes that take advantage of more readily available ingredients. Most of the recipes in the game are simplified for the sake of gameplay. Many omit ingredients that are necessary for their real world, real world, real world <laughs> counterparts. Then there are a few featuring unusual ingredients that might be challenging to track down. We've gone to great lengths to fill in the blanks and make sensible substitutions where needed and the end results should speak for themselves. Every recipe has been vetted, tested, approved, and most important, enjoyed. 
Cooking with ingredients that are unique to each season is a fun way to appreciate the distinct flavors that are at their peak for only a short time each year. That's what I really like about this. Um, I actually have, uh, like a website saved. It's the seasonal food website where it tells you if you put in your state and the season and the, or the month, it'll tell you what, um, fruits and veggies are in season. And that's when they're at their peak. Best flavor. Um, with that in mind, we've arranged the recipes in the book into spring, summer, fall, and winter, according to their most prominent ingredients. Whenever possible, we recommend using fresh ingredients directly from the farmer garden. Sometimes that won't be possible because of location, weather, or other circumstances. So canned or frozen ingredients can be used in a pinch. Still, for the best flavor, fresh is always best. Look at that cake. Chocolate cake. I like a lot of the desserts in this book. celestial this game kind of feels because of the whole starry stardew starriness about it i don't know how to describe it like it feels kind of like a, a fantasy place um, look how pretty this artwork is i love it we got the spring recipes coming They do this for each season. The complete breakfast. It includes hash browns, yogurt pancakes with salmon berry rhubarb compote, fried eggs. I don't know if I've ever had fried eggs before. I usually eat them scrambled. I wonder if I would like it like that. It, it's always looked good to me, but for some reason I've just never eaten it. a fried egg. But that salmon berry rhubarb compote sounds amazing. You could obviously, like I would obviously use maple syrup too, but, but that sounds... Like, this book made me want to live on a farm. Well, not live on a farm, per se, because farm life is very difficult in real life. Like, if you own, like, a, like a commercial farm, or, like, if you own, honestly, just, like, a regular farm, and you sell your stuff, like, any farm, it's difficult. <laughs> Unless you just have, like, a little bit, like, a couple chickens and a a goat or two <laughs> for milk and cheese. It's probably not that bad. The farmer's lunch, the farmer's lunch, the farmer's lunch. Which is it's an omelet. Omelet and roasted parsnips with baby arugula. Oh, that sounds really good. I'm not a big fan of omelets though either. I don't know. I like just eggs, and I don't really like eggs and cheese together. It's so weird, I know. We've got a veggie stock here. Veggie stock. Chowder. Chowder. I do like chowder. I like clam chowder. New, New England clam chowder. seem that appealing to me because the concept of creamy rice for some reason just does not sound good to me or like rice 
rice pudding. There's a rice pudding recipe in this too. But again, maybe this recipe would change my mind. Who knows? Got a pizza. Pizza coming up. Pizza, pizza. Cauliflower crust option. And it's a. Oh, we skipped a page. Oops. A pizza with fresh spring toppings and a cauliflower crust option. Um, so it's asparagus, mushroom, and goat cheese toppings. Sounds pretty good. I don't know about the asparagus, but maybe it would be good. I've had goat cheese on pizza before. That's pretty good. <laughs> Carb surprise. <laughs> Shows you how to do the, the thing here where you fold it. And do. That kind of reminds me of Cooking Mama. That sounds good. Stir fry, stir fry, stir fry. Veggie stir, stir fry. You know, I I tend to like I tend to like noodle stir fries a lot. Those are probably my favorite. Rice is good, but I like noodles a lot. I know rice is probably better for you. Cheese cauliflower. Um, a salad. A salad, a salad. With wild dandelions, leeks, and grapefruit. Grapefruit. Dandelions are really good for you. Here's the rice pudding with the cherry compote. Got rhubarb pie. This is something I would want to try, definitely. I like pies a lot, and I don't think I've ever tasted rhubarb before, but I would definitely try this. This is pretty cool as a uh, make your own ginger ale recipe. That's pretty dope. And Jeremy likes ginger ale a lot, so when I saw this, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I can make her own ginger ale. That's neat. Summer. I love the picture for this. Summer recipes. This one might have my favorite. season in these pictures. Very clever. See, this kind of looks like golden hour, or like, I can't tell, it kind of looks like middle of the day. I can't tell if it feels more like dawn or dusk to me. But, oh, love it. Bread and bruschetta. Bread and bruschetta.
every time I see that, like fruit salad, every time I read that, I think of, is it the Wiggles? Something, it's one of those kids TV shows where the song, it's like fruit salad, yummy, yummy. This recipe, to me, sounds so good, and I would love to try this. And I've always liked the concept of putting food in food, like a, using some kind of food as a bowl, like squash or pineapple. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, but that just looks so delicious. And unique, too. go by on our street, the window shakes. That's what that sound is. <laughs> Got a lucky lunch here. Watch this. I thought it sounded pretty good for a salad. Because I always like tortilla. Uh, I like tortilla chips in a salad. existence right in front of me. <laughs> Why? Someone's got to invent that. <laughs> Mango sticky rice. Never had sticky rice. I think they're so satisfying. Blueberry tart. I love how they put the blueberry tart right after the pink cake. The blue one right after the pink one. I don't know why. But I fucking love tarts. Blueberry tart. Crisps. Crumbles. Cobblers. All good. All very, very good. I kept seeing this here, and for some reason, thinking about Moo Moo Milk, I was like, is this a Pokemon cookbook? And dude, the style of this book is so nice, and I could picture, like, a Pokemon cookbook in this form. Somebody should make a, like, if, as if you were, like, a farmer in Pokemon or something, making recipes. You could do, like, puffins and stuff.
golden days of plenty. A radish salad. Radish salad. I don't know if I've had radishes before. Um, I'm sure I'd like them though. I do like root veggies, which I think that's what that is. Radish. Autumn's Bounty, Veggie Medley, and Red Plate. Got that here. Autumn's Bounty. And we got the Veggie Medley up there in the top left. And the Red Plate. Red Plate. Red Plate. Red I like, the reason why is because I like flavors of things with each other. So like the taste of beans with something else, not just beans by itself. Um, the survival burger is eggplant and bean patties, like I said, with pickled carrot ribbons. I was wondering what those were. <laughs> those ribbons. A stuffing. A stuffing recipe. Super meal. Super meal. Super meal. What is that? Warm grain bowl with fall veggies and a green dressing. Salmon dinner. I love salmon. Salmon dinner. Salmon dinner. Dinner. And there's that blackberry cobbler. That looks oh so good. <laughs>
This also kind of reminds me of like a storybook when I was a kid. Reading like Christmas books. Kind of matches my nails too. A little bit. Probably match the summer one. Yeah, it looks really good. I like creamy soups. Creamy soups. Pepper poppers. Pepper poppers. Pepper poppers. Pepper poppers. <laughs> yeah, I bet those are pretty yummy. Although, jalapenos, like, it's kind of weird. I feel like banana peppers, are they milder than jalapenos? Because... seen muffin. I don't know if I'd like that. Maybe. Uh, I like chocolate chip muffins, blueberry muffins. Reminds me a little bit of Portal because it's got a cherry on top. <laughs> Triple shot espresso. Triple shot espresso. I wonder if they'll make another cookbook. Like a part two. Because there's more recipes. Like I just saw one of the quotes. It says Jody mentioned the maple.
There's a couple acknowledgements in the back by Eric Brown and Ryan Novak. Ryan Novak is the one that had partial, um, like the food cooking inspiration, like real life. And then Eric made Stardew Valley. It's so cool. And I guess Carrie Fry made the art in this, which it's so nice. Which, very well done. Very well done.
since I'm such a small creator, no one's gonna know that I'm, <laughs> I'm the one that made this thing, this poem or whatever. I don't know, I notice sometimes that, <laughs> this is so fucked up, but I notice sometimes that, like, bigger creators, ASM artists, and not steal small creators' ideas and stuff. kind of, to me, partially kind of shows that, like, they're kind of running out of ideas, and I don't know, <laughs> that kind of infuriates me if you have, like, a big following, and, like, like, it, you had, like, a certain niche at one point, or you started out doing this, and not to say that you decided to do something else, necessarily, but, like, you know, just change, like, the, what you're doing on your channel. It's more to do with, the, it's like they know that something is trending or popular or something. Or that, I don't know, or that, like, small creators have good ideas and they're just, like, running out of ideas. I don't know. I guess everybody kind of gets to a point like that where you're, like, you don't know what to make. It kind of bothers me a little bit. Shouldn't. <laughs> but maybe you guys kind of get it. Kind of get it, kind of get it. Uh, sorry, I had to vent a little about that. It's just something I've kind of noticed. I don't know. But anyways, I'll see you guys. Uh, the next video I'm going to actually put out is... A Dragon Village video, finally. <laughs> I've done a bunch of shorts of it, but I haven't made a full video yet, so I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be doing that next. Since I'm waiting for the Fallout cookbook to come. Yeah, I'll wait till.